Hey everyone, Isaac Anderson here, owner of Zico and LinkedIn instructor at Data Driven. All right, we have th about 30 minutes to cover a topic that is, I believe, super critical for everyone here. And that topic is overcoming the four challenges that you will very likely encounter when you are doing relational B2B sales on LinkedIn uh, for your service or product. And this becomes especially relevant when what you're selling is very expensive. All right, so just to kind of set the set the stage here before we get into the actual challenges, because remember, if you're dealing with a challenge, it's because of certain activity that you were doing. So I want to just in the beginning here briefly set the stage and talk about, you know, what we mean when we say things like relational selling on LinkedIn and and what are the expectations that you should have for the activity that you're going to be doing that is kind of drumming up these challenges? So is in a nutshell, from start to finish, the kind of process that we have in mind when we are talking about relational selling of a B2B service or product on LinkedIn, it kind of looks like this. So obviously you sell something obviously that is awesome and brings value and it's for another business. And so what you do is you say, I'm going to find a whole lot of people who are perfect, perfect potential leads. I'm going to make genuine friendships with a lot of those people. I'm going to get them to know me, like me, and trust me. I'm going to be the trusted advisor, the industry expert, their go-to person. I'm going to find out where they're at in the sales cycle. I'm going to do due diligence, stay top of mind. I'm going to plug people that are at the end of the sales cycle into my sales funnel. And then that whole process ends in B2B sales. Now, since this is not so much of like a lead form, this isn't so much paid advertising, this is very one-on-one um, -on -one relationship building. And because of the nature of one-on-one -on -one relationship building, a lot of the activity that results in authentic relationships is going to be done through messaging. Now, you definitely want the relationship and the conversation to leave LinkedIn and that kind of thing. But a lot of the challenges that you're going to face are going to be related to that one-on-one -on -one nature where you are having intentional um, relationships and conversations with your potential prospects on LinkedIn and in a way that's not like sleazy and spammy and uh, gross. So that's the kind of framework or the stage, the activity that we're talking about when we're describing the challenges that we're gonna talk about here today and how, over, how to overcome them. Okay, now, you're probably thinking, I'm gonna get really sick of this guy's face. So in just a minute, I'm actually, <laughs> what am I doing? I'm gonna shrink the camera here and we're gonna mostly do like a screen share and you'll see me down on the corner, but that's coming in just a second. Really quick, I'm gonna just explain in a, like a chronological summary how these challenges unfold. And by the way, what I see a lot of times happen is when these when these challenges come up, it seems like sometimes it can really take the wind out of people's uh, sales. And it's very like sad. It's like, no, don't give up. Don't don't give up. Just press on. If If you're encountering a challenge, don't let it stall you out. View it as uh, a weakness has been revealed. You've got to fix it. So don't, don't let the wind be taken out of your sails. Press on, okay? But this is how it, how it unfolds. So you get excited uh, because everyone tells you that LinkedIn is the bee's knees for B2B, right? So you get on LinkedIn and you go, all right, I'm going to find these people. I'm going to talk to them. It's going to be amazing. And then you go, oh, crap. I have no idea who I should talk to. And if that's a challenge that you're facing, that's going to be a showstopper. If you don't know who to talk to, I mean, nothing else happens. So that's challenge number one. And then if you can overcome that challenge, uh, the next challenge you're probably going to face is how on earth do I find all of these people that I want to talk to? How do I find them on LinkedIn? How do I get a, a laser focused outreach list? Right? So you got There's a few things that you're going to need to do there. And if you, if you can't get a laser focused outreach list, that's going to cause all kinds of problems. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, if you can get that list, you're all ready. You can, you can push connect, you can send the message, you can uh, send messages to first degree connections, all kinds of fun stuff. This is like the magic's about to happen. But then you might go, you know what? I have no idea what to say to these people. Oh crap. And this is very different 
than you know a Google ad or a contact form because those are those are pretty impersonal. When it is you and you're the one talking, it's a two-way thing. If you are, you know, if you're subpar or, and you don't know how to do this, it's going to be painfully, painfully apparent that <laughs> you don't know what's going on. So if you don't know what to say to what is essentially your target audience, that's going to stall you out too. It's a big challenge that people run into, and I want you to be able to overcome that. So, you know, what do you say in order to some of the guiding values? So we're going to talk about that. And then once that ball gets rolling and you've kind of like, you know, you've, you've sent out a bunch of connection requests, you're having some conversations and you, you're thinking to yourself, you know, how do I measure my efforts? Because I want to, you know, optimize things and I want to do a good job. So you start piddling around on LinkedIn and you go, there is like no data on here. How on earth do I measure my efforts? How do I measure my KPIs so that I can, you know, do a better job? So that becomes a, a problem, especially for sales teams that are really big on efficiency. So we're going to talk about that last. All right. So I'm just going to, you know, shrink this here up a bit and we're going to hop on LinkedIn. All right. So this is challenge number one. You're not sure who to talk to. So everybody tells you, oh, you do B2B. You've got to be on LinkedIn. So you go to LinkedIn and you're on, you know, you're on the homepage and you go, uh, this is cool, I guess. I'm supposed to uh, find people that I want to uh, talk to, right? And that kind of thing. So obviously you go, let's go to search for people. All right, we're going to search for people. And then you go, oh, all right, let's go to all filters. And then you get here and you go, I don't know who to talk to. That That's that's kind of like the point where people go, and they stop. And if they don't get over that, it just kind of fizzles out and then they move on to something else. So how do you overcome that? Well, one thing that I really want you to pay attention to here is, this is more like a, this is like a high level comment. When you are on LinkedIn, and if you're gonna be doing relational uh, selling, this is, this is an issue that gets brought up all the time when I'm uh, doing a, a sales meeting. That is, if you're gonna do, do relational selling on LinkedIn, you are not sending connection requests to companies, you are sending connection requests to individual people. And that's something that everybody knows, but there's often a disconnect when they're talking about strategy and trying to figure out who their target audience is. So they'll say, oh, I, I work with this kind of company and this kind of company, blah, 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 blah. And that's all great to know, but I'll say, you know, we gotta bring it like a level, we're gonna zoom in a little bit because we are gonna be connecting with individual people. So tell me about the people that you need to connect with on LinkedIn. And that's when a lot of times people are, are going, oh yeah, I don't know. So if you have any kind of, this is what I tell people, if, I have, if you have any kind of historical data, you gotta lean on that, absolutely. So if this is a brand new thing for you and you have no historical data, you're just gonna have to have the expectation that you're gonna be doing a little bit of r and It's not gonna be as efficient, you're gonna be learning. But if you want a, a solid place to start, what I'll, what I'll tell people is, you know, pull up your paid invoices, right? Not the unpaid ones, pull out your paid invoices and go, all right, who are my favorite clients? Uh, they pay on time, good profit margins. I, they, I enjoy working with them. And then go, who were the decision makers at those, at the, at those companies? Or who were the cheerleaders for me at those companies. And so cheerleader is not pom-pom. I'm talking about the people that really go to bat for you because they value what you do. So put a name and a face to your to your existing client base, if you can, if you have that. And then, you know, put on like a, your FBI hat, pull out your FBI pen, and it's time to write down everything. I guess probably detective would be a little bit better way to say that. You got to write down everything that you can about those people who have historically been the people that get you the job, okay? And as I kind of skip ahead a little bit, if you're gonna be profiling them, not their profile, but like profiling them, there's some things that you're gonna to need to know about them if you wanna find them on LinkedIn. So, you know, a big one's going to be, what's their job title? You know, what's their job title? What, what's their industry? What's their role in the company? Does location matter? Does industry matter? Uh, what about their personal skill set? And then you can even take it a, a layer deeper and say, 
Uh, what is it that is really personally motivating them to want to work with my company? So write down everything that you can about those people and essentially you're describing your tribe. So who do you want to surround yourself with? And what, what's going to end up happening, you know, kind of down the road, is if you can identify the individuals who value what you do, who have historically been the people that get you new clients at, the, at those companies, and you are proactive about making a lot of friendships with those people, you are going to have a lot of opportunity because you've surrounded yourself with a lot of perfect potential leads and they all know you like you trust you. So fun stuff, getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. All right, so you've got to overcome the challenge when you don't know who to connect with. So lean on your historical data, profile people within the companies who are your current clients or have been your past clients, and that's going to go a really long way. And make sure that whatever you're writing down about them, you're going to want to kind of sneak ahead and make sure that you're taking note on what you can search for in LinkedIn as part of your R&D for those who to connect with. All right, so next thing, let's say you want to talk to, you, you've done your R&D. Right, and you've gone through all of your, your past pain clients and you go, all right, I know for sure. I want to talk to people in Los Angeles, actually the greater Los Angeles. Pretty cool. And then you go, you know what? I want to talk to the president of companies in LA. So you go like that and you go, awesome. Look at all of these presidents, 148,000 people. Oh, the rain is coming down. You're getting so excited. Maybe you're on Sales Navigator, which looks a little bit different. P.S. I love Sales Nav. And you're kind of going through and you're going, sweet. Look at all these awesome. Oh, no. And then you stop and go, I don't want to talk to a vice president. I don't want to talk to a vice president of sales. Oh, no. And then your heart breaks and you realize that your list is full of people that you don't want to talk to. So how do you fix that? You need to learn how to master search so that you can get a laser focused list. So how do you, how do you do that? How do you find all these guys and get a great list? That's, that's the next kind of um, point of friction that people come across. I do want to say one thing really quick here before I give you a couple tools uh, for finding your target audience. The first one is this. It really is super critical if you are doing relational selling on LinkedIn that you have a laser focused list. So you, when you get this list, if this if you're using free or premium, it's going to look like this. If you're looking at this list, view it like your lead list. Like maybe you're going to buy a list some other places, whatever. You need to view this like that, like a lead list. Every person that's on this list who is not a good fit for you that you choose to invest time in is just going to ruin your ROI, just going to just kill your time efficiency. If you have to manually read a profile to see if it's a good fit or not, wasted time. And with LinkedIn, time is the big, big hidden cost for relational selling. You don't want to read the wrong profile just to vet it. You don't want to start a conversation and invest time into that messaging with someone who's not a good fit. It's such a waste of time and it'll just kill your ROI. So having a laser focused list really does become super critical. And to get a laser focused list, if that's where you're kind of stalling out as you go, uh, how do I find my target audience and get a really awesome list? There's, there's two things that you're gonna find are extremely helpful. Number one is, uh, sorry to say it, sales nav, the targeting is just a zillion times better. And just for kicks and giggles, if you don't have a sales nav account, I'm just gonna kind of brush over this. So you've got, if you're on free or premium location, uh, current company pass, you know, industries, schools, language, uh, interests, you've got first and last name, title, company, school, that's cool, service providers, that's new, love it. If you are in sales nav, if you've got all that plus some other awesome stuff, you can search for keywords, you can do geography in a much more narrow way. Instead of just doing regions, you can do by zip code plus radius. Lots of different smaller towns are in there too. You can do an exclusion. So maybe you do accounting, but you go, actually, you know what? I want to 
exclude accounting, very helpful. You can do uh, title, current, and then lots of options, past, current, past, current, that kind of thing. You can search for text within the company name, very helpful. Company headcount, company type, uh, years, of, years of experience. There's just so many uh, more search fields that you can use on SalesNav that that alone gives you a much more laser focused list, which is super critical for your time. So if you're having trouble getting a good list, just know that SalesNav is, is part of the reason why you're not having a good list if you don't have SalesNav. LinkedIn's a for-profit company. You know, it is what it is. The other thing is learning Boolean. Now, Boolean, I love. It sounds a little geeky, techy. It's, it's actually very simple. What I would do, uh, if I was you, I would leave here and Google LinkedIn Boolean search, okay? And then spend some time learning how to use Boolean because what Boolean is going to do is gonna, it's going to let you do a search within a search. So should we do something for kicks and giggles? Remember the greater LA area job title is president. And then we're going, oh, sweet, 160,000. And then, oh, let down. Lots of non-actual presidents, right? Well, if you do Boolean, which is going to look like this, and after you kind of like read through the documentation, you'll go, oh, yeah, that's a complex search. That's cool. So we do president, not, and then we're going to exclude a group. That small little thing here, and you can really geek out and, and build that out so it's laser focused. This is really, really basic. But that brought it from 160,000 to 92,000, which is, you know, like 60,000, almost less people. I don't want to talk to those wrong 60,000 people. <laughs> so if you're having trouble finding your audience on LinkedIn, I would give Sales Navigator a trial. Uh, you can do a free trial for sure. That's what, that's what I would do is I do a trial. And then if you like it, I just stick with it. Uh, and then even with Sales Nav, Boolean is really going to help you get a laser focused list. All right. So that's uh, challenge number two is ah, how do I find my audience on LinkedIn? Once you do that, once you get your laser focused list, let's just kind of go with the presidents of LA here. You're like going, this is amazing. I'm drooling over this list. Look at all this opportunity and you're so excited. And you go, all right, I can open Matthew's profile and you can do a couple things here. I can, oh sweet, I can send him a connection request. I can add a note, uh, which by the way, this is on sales nav, but if you're on free or premium, do the same thing. You always want to send that custom message with a connection request. So here you are and you're going, I can just message Matthew right now. I can send him a connection request. Maybe I want to message him directly and I'll just do this. Sweet. But then you stop and you get this deer in the headlights look because you go, uh, yeah, I have no idea what I should actually say to this person. And that is why a lot of people fizzle out doing LinkedIn. I cannot tell you how many people that, I've, that I personally know where they get here, they've identified their audience, they found them on LinkedIn, but they get like nervous when it comes to the messaging because it's often new to them. So what should you do when you don't know what to say? It's kind of like when you don't know who to talk to. The first thing that you're going to want to do is lean on your past experience. So maybe you've never really done LinkedIn, but have you ever gone to in-person networking meetings? You know, what did you say there? Uh, have you ever done cold call? Oh, I don't like cold calls. <laughs> but if, if you did and you know, you were good at it, what did you say? You know, draw from your past experience. And then what, what I like to do, I'm going to give you some advice here in just a minute, but as a kind of like, again, high level, if you're not sure what to say, uh, you're going to waste a lot of time figuring out. So what I do is I take and I map out the conversation that I want to have. And then I'll write out what are the anticipated objections. What are my replies going to be to those objections? What are my, what are their, my, anticipated things that they're going to say where it's positive and then how am I going to take that and then move it forward so map it out because that's going to save you a ton of time just typing because you can copy paste and tailor it and then if you have to rethink of what to say every time is just exhausting and and your time efficiency will not be good so map it out you'll thank me later 
But then when it comes to actually executing the messaging, you know, what should you say? There's a there's all kinds of things going on where we could talk for an hour on etiquette alone on LinkedIn. I mean, how do you talk to a 30 year old CEO? How do you talk to a 60 year old CEO? You know, how is that different from when you're talking to a marketing manager? Uh, what are you selling? So many things go into messaging. It is a big, big, big topic. So because we have limited time today, what I want to do is just give you a little bit of advice on two stages of messaging. So let's talk about sending the connection request and then that first message after they accept. And the reason why I want to focus on these two things today is because those two messages, they really set the tone for the relationship forever. So you need to do a really good job sending the connection request and then that first message after they connect. All right, let's take a minute here and talk about sending connection requests. I mentioned this earlier, always, always, always send a custom message with the connection request. Otherwise, if you just push connect like this right here and just go boom, connect, 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 the person on the other end of the line, they're not gonna have any clue why you wanna connect. They're probably not going to assume that you're awesome and your acceptance rates are gonna be really low. So always send the, the custom message. If you're on free or premium, it looks a little bit different than sales nav, which I showed you just a minute ago. You're gonna go like this, connect, and then yes, always add a note. But what do you say? What do you say during that connection request? I mean, it's one thing if you know who they are, that's easy, because you've got common ground. So that's easy. What about if it's someone that you don't know and you're starting conversations with perfect potential prospects but they're, they're cold. How do you do that? Again, big topic here, but really easy guiding value is this acronym, okay? The CVC. Did you like that down here? Did you see that CVC? It's like, why well, MCA? All right, too funny. Sorry, I like to have a good time. Use the CVC method. And CVC is just an acronym for common ground, value prop, and compliment. And you can do a combination of all of them. Using those three things in your connection request message tends to be a really easy way to start a relational conversation. And remember, please, 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 please don't forget what I'm about to say. Right now, you don't know if these people are good leads or not. So don't send them a sales pitch. Seriously, don't send them a sales pitch. Send them a friendship pitch. That is what you're after here. You're not just after a sale. Okay, don't be short cited you're after a friendship pitch this should you know reek of i'm a nice guy who wants to know you right so this should be a friendship pitch not a sales pitch and then you can include common ground like a city maybe you invite them out to if you have a really cool location maybe you went to the same university maybe you in real life know some of the same people whatever you can do to find common ground that tends to be a really great way to get that conversation going, maybe you visit their town every once in a while, you know, name drop your favorite restaurant, that kind of thing. Uh, compliment, you know, sometimes I'll be on someone's website because I'm, you know, scoping them out because they might be a good lead. And then I'll go, wow, this website is amazing. And they really nailed their messaging to their audience way better than they've seen in their industry. And I'll say that in the connection request, I'll say, you guys do a great job at this. And then they know, oh, Isaac actually read my profile. That's really nice. So that's a compliment and then value prop. You want to be careful with that one because it's a little bit more direct and it's a little bit more salesy, but sometimes it's appropriate, uh, especially if you are doing something like referral partners or strategic alliances, that kind of thing, where the value prop, it makes sense for them to hear what that might be. And you can you know, weave them all together. It doesn't have to be just one of the three. Okay, that is connection request. Use the CVC method. So then what happens after, let's say David, I, let's say I send that and then David accepts and then I'm going to send him a message. And one thing you have to remember, when you send a connection request from LinkedIn, if you had the custom message in there, that custom message is actually going to be the first line in your inbox thread. So it's very important that whatever you're kind of mapping out, that there's continuity between your connection request and that first message. You don't want to just rely on the connection request to you know say it all. So save something for the first message after they accept. But what I found is a lot of people, they'll get up on their phone like this. Here's my phone. Oh yeah, look at that. Isaac wants to connect. Uh, cool. And they'll push accept and they don't really take the time to, to dig into your profile and read your message. Some people do for sure, but it's like if they read the connection request message, 
it seems like they forget it. So you've got to ace that first message after they connect. All right, now just for kicks and giggles, let's look at Jonathan's profile here because he's part of this summit. What I would do if I was sending that first message after the connect is I would do the quad method, all right? Quad method, it's another acronym. And what, what we're doing here with the quad method is we're, we're basically dismantling assumptions and we're dismantling sales pitches. So I don't like it when someone gives me a pitch right after I connect because I'm like, uh, I don't know who you are. I don't care about what you sell. Why, why would you think that I, that I do? Why didn't you just ask me, you know? So what we're doing with the quad method, quad again, acronym, and what it stands for, and we'll unpack it in a minute. Quad is question, answer, dialogue. So if I just sent Jonathan a connection request, and if he's a perfect prospect for me, I would go, all right, uh, I know what you do. I've sent you a connection request. You know, it's a friendship pitch. I'm going to read your profile a little bit here just to get familiar with what you do again. And then I would ask Jonathan a question about, not me, not about what I do. It has to be about Jonathan. It has to be about them. I'm going to ask a question about, about my prospect. I want them to talk about themselves. Now I have to be intentional about what I'm doing. So I'm going to keep the topic related to what we both do, but the focus needs to be on them. And what I'm doing is, is I'm almost being an interviewer. So you interview your prospect and if you're not giving them a sales pitch, you'll be shocked at the details that people give you. And you're like, oh my gosh, I would never have gotten that info out of you from a contact form. So you ask some questions, they'll answer back. Not everybody will answer. Some people are always going to be a no reply. But when people do, it's like, wow, this is so amazing. They're giving you insider info. And if they're giving you insider info, you know exactly where they're at in the sales cycle because they told you. Wow, so cool. They told you maybe they're never a lead. They told you they're maybe looking at that a year from now. And so if you're good at sales, you just schedule stuff out in your CRM to keep this thing moving forward. But if you just go and do like a sales pitch when you first connect with someone, you're going to burn the bridge with the 95% of people who are not at the end of the sales cycle now. So this is, again, this is a relationship. This is a two-way conversation. Do the quad method. Question, answer, dialogue. And what's happening is it's like you're an interviewer and you're turning into a trusted advisor because you're giving them relevant information and you know it's relevant because they told you exactly where they're at. It's really a feel good thing. And so then it's like, well, when do I give them the call to action? Well, you'll know when, <laughs> when they need the call to action because you know exactly where they're at. If they're at the end of the sales cycle and they told you, you can give them, give them the ZTA, you know, like, can I email you my portfolio? Let's set up a Zoom meeting, whatever. You'll know because I told you. If it's uh, for later on, then you know. You know, and then in the meantime, you can give them some helpful info and be their guide along the buyer's journey, bringing them value and being someone that they know, like, and trust. And if you've ever done B2B sales for expensive services or products or talk to people who have been in it for years, they'll say, yep, it's all who you know, and it's all about knowing them and liking them and trusting them. And if you've got that going for you, your name gets put to the top of the pile of the vendor list. <laughs> All right, cool. So sending that message, kind of reviewing here, if you're not sure what to say, draw from past experience. When you're sending the connection request, remember, this is a friendship pitch, not a sales pitch. Use the CVC method if you're not sure what to say. Common ground, value prop, compliment. If someone accepts your connect and you're sending that first message, it's going to set the tone for the relationship forever moving forward. So do a good job making it about them, their needs, get them to talk about themselves, ask questions, turn it into an interview, become a trusted advisor. All right. So then, you know, what? let's say you've had, so you've had 500 conversations with people and this is great. You know, the ball is rolling. You've got some good leads. You've maybe made some money. Uh, you've got a bunch of stuff scheduled for follow-ups and then you go, you know, on LinkedIn, uh, if I kind of look around, I don't see anywhere where LinkedIn's going to give me any kind of data to help me measure my efforts to see if I'm succeeding or failing. 
or if I need to improve, and if I do need to improve, where? So uh, I don't know if maybe this ruffles feathers, but I go, yeah, that's because LinkedIn's a jerk. They don't give you KPI data, and you, even when you play by the rules, LinkedIn's a jerk. But there is a way where you can get around the lack of data to measure your KPIs and measure your efforts. So let's talk about that. And we're just going to hop over here to Sales Nav, and we'll just stick with Jonathan. Let's give him a little bit of FaceTime here, uh, make him even more famous. <laughs> okay. So let's talk briefly KPIs. If you don't know what a KPI is, I'm just going to uh, briefly go over that. So KPI, Key Performance Indicator. It is a measurable number that tells you whether you are succeeding or not. And when it comes to organic outreach on LinkedIn, LinkedIn's not going to give you diddly squat. They'll give you a profile view. Ooh, it's like a vanity metric. It doesn't mean anything if you're focused on leads, okay? So LinkedIn doesn't give you any KPI data. And what KPI data should you be concerned with, right? That's a great question. So I'll just tell you, in case you're wondering, and this is something where we had to develop this because <laughs> we have clients that pay us money and we go, yeah, we need to make a report. Oh man, LinkedIn doesn't give us any data. We've got to figure out a way to record the data and then put it in a spreadsheet and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. So trust me here, KPIs that you should be measuring that should matter to you are going to be things like what are your connection request acceptance rates? If that's low, you got to change something. What about how many people are no replies to your messaging? You know, some people, they're just never going to reply, but is the number too low? If you're not measuring the KPIs, you'd never know. What about how many people are not a lead? You know, from their profile, it looks like they would be, but after talking to them, you find out that they're not. What's the percentage of people that are not a lead? That's going to be helpful for you to know just for expectations for list quality. What about how many people converted from LinkedIn to your sales funnel. That's a really big one. It's probably the second most important thing. And then what about how many people converted to your sales funnel actually became clients, you know, acquisitions. That's number one important. So if you're not, again, if you don't have this data, how are you going to know if you're being successful or not and how are you supposed to make any kind of actionable, achievable sales plans? Ah! So a lot of people, they'll, they'll kind of like be moving and then they'll go, shoot, I don't know if I'm doing well or not. And they might be doing awful. They might be just failing miserably. And they wouldn't know because they're not measuring their efforts. And a lot of people don't know how. And that is why it is a challenge. And this is maybe for like more uh, sophisticated sales teams, but it becomes really super critical. So I've kind of been hovering over this guy right here, if you've been watching. How do you measure KPI data? And I am a fan of no automation. I don't like to rely on uh, third-party software. I think that's not a long-term solution. I don't want to get put in the penalty box. I'd rather play by the rules. So I have come to believe that the best way to measure KPIs is to use the native tool in LinkedIn tagging. Now tagging You'll see here, this is in Sales Navigator, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that here in just a minute. Tagging is built into Sales Nav, which has a lot of perks, okay? Now, it goes beyond measuring data. And if you're in like a free or premium account, it's a bummer, but there's no tagging, all right? What you could do is you could use a like a Chrome extension or a third-party something that lets you do tagging you could try to save stuff in spreadsheets or that it just gets so messy. It's, it's, it's a pain. It's not scalable. So you could use some kind of third party extension or whatever to do tagging. But I would say if you're, again, this is just me, this is my opinion. If you're serious about doing B2B sales on LinkedIn and if what you're selling is expensive and you're going to be relational and in it for the long game, pay the money for sales nav and get tagging. That's just my opinion. So tagging. How do you turn tags into measurable info? Well, what you need to do is take your KPIs that you want to measure. This is, this is so simple, but it's like light bulb. Ah. Take your KPIs that you want to measure and just make your tags match your KPIs. So add tags, scroll to the bottom, manage tag list. And then you've got a few things. Uh, I've got lots of stuff going on, but you might do replied 
uh, interested, just replied, review, I've got invited pending, uh, converted to sales funnel, that kind of thing. So make your tags match your KPIs. So have a tag called invited pending, have a tag titled no reply, have a tag titled replied, have a, a tag titled interested, wants follow-up, converted to sales funnel and client, all right? And then all you have to do is, you know, if you're on Jonathan's profile, add tag if you're inviting him and then go add tag invited pending and then boom if Jonathan accepts my connection request message and then I message him back but he's not said anything yet I'm just going to go add tag we're just going to update that from invited pending to no reply apply and now he's no reply and then maybe Jonathan messages me back I just change that from no reply to replied and then maybe a month or two or six or a year later he goes, oh yeah, uh, this is something that's on something for next quarter. I go, that's great. Add tag. We're going to update this to interested. And then I'm going to follow up with him later. And then I follow up and Jonathan converts to sales funnel. There you go. And then the conversation has really left LinkedIn. And then if there's an acquisition there where they become a client, I would change this tag to client. Awesome, awesome stuff. Now, taking the tags and getting the numbers is really easy if you're using sales now because check this out tags are built right into search are you geeking out with me because i'm geeking out so let's go like this tag all right how many people have converted to sales funnel there we go let's just let that load awesome 300 people easy peasy i can go like this and all of my numbers are there 749 3713 123 clients, 1,700 not leads. I've got 62 people wanting a follow-up right now. So if you're good with a spreadsheet and, you know, X number and 100%, it is not hard at all to plug these numbers into a spreadsheet. You can even be extra geeky and create a pie chart and see what percentage of your activity has resulted in a no reply or converted to sales funnel and et cetera and et cetera. Pretty cool stuff. So I hope that no, just seeing this gets you excited to use a tag and to, to really figure it out and to go for it. All right. All right. We just don't have time to talk about spreadsheet type stuff right now. So one more, this is, this is going to be a bonus here. Okay. Uh, with, with tags, if you're doing anything like a top of mind campaign, so maybe you have a marketing collateral that's really hyper relevant to a very specific group of people and you want to share that with them with a custom message through messaging. That's really easy to do if you have sales and you have search and you have tags. So maybe you want to only send this to a group of people that are first degree connections in this industry, in this town. And then with this tag, there's your list. All you have to do, I mean, you can open the, open the profile or you can just go boom, message, boom, message, boom, message. So tagging makes it so super easy to stay top of mind and play the long game and really invest in relationship equity for those B2B sales that can take a longer time to come to fruition. All right, so tags, all right, there you go. Fun stuff, I love tags, geeking out. All right, let's do this. We just covered a lot of info. Uh, you might feel like you drank from a fire hydrant. Maybe you're a genius and you took it all in. That's cool. So let's do this. Let's review here at the end just to help you remember. Uh, challenge number one that tends to happen with relational selling for B2B services and products on LinkedIn is you go, I don't know who to talk to. That is a challenge. Don't let the wind get taken out of your sales. It's a weakness in your business process. Go for it, fix it. It's there, it needs to be addressed. To find out who to talk to, uh, draw from past experience, take people at your existing client base, who are those individuals who were the decision makers, who were cheerleaders, write down everything you can about them. Definitely focus on the traits of those individuals, because remember on LinkedIn you connect with individual people, not just companies. Highlight the traits that you can later search for in LinkedIn, because that's going to make your life a lot easier. And once you've kind of figured out who those individuals are, then you're going to go to search and you're going to probably need SalesNav and Boolean to really get a laser focus.
focused list of people to connect with. And then once you start connecting with people and you've got, you know, new connections and the messaging is going on, you might go, oh, actually I have no idea what to say to these people. So again, draw from your past experience, maybe at networking meetings, maybe if you've done cold calling, email marketing, whatever it has been, draw from your past experience. And when you're sending the connection request, remember this is a friendship pitch, not a sales pitch. Use the CVC method if it's a cold outreach. So compliment, value prop, common ground, just a good starting place, you know, get creative, do your own thing. And then once someone accepts and you're gonna send that first message and the conversation's just getting started, remember, it's not about you, it's about them. It's about the prospect, don't make it about you. So ask questions about what they do, keep it related to what you both do, but let them do the talking. Be like an interviewer. You're gonna get information out of them. So you ask them questions, they'll answer. You can have an informed discussion back and forth and all the information that you give them is gonna be hyper relevant. No more assumptions. You're gonna have real time, live insider info on what their needs are, where they're at in the sales cycle. And then you can just you know plan and act accordingly. And then once you've got a bunch of those conversations going, the next challenge you're gonna face is, uh, how do I measure my efforts? So I would encourage you to use tagging to keep track of all of your KPIs. Uh, you can use a third party extension for tagging. I personally like to use sales nav tagging. It's just built right into search, makes things a lot easier. And you can also do the top of mind stuff, which we just talked about as well. All right, so there you go. Hopefully that was fun. If you have to you know, restart this and watch it again, totally cool. It was good having you guys here and I will see you somewhere on LinkedIn.